Welcome to the Eye on Annapolis Local Business Spotlight. There are thousands of locally owned businesses in the area, some small and some large. Some you may know and others you don't. But one thing they all have in common is a great story, and we want to share it with you. Join us every Saturday as we talk to the founders, the owners, and the managers of local businesses you have come to know and love, and those you will come to know and love. Now here's your host, John Frenet, with this week's Local Business Spotlight. Boy, it's early morning, and I'm over here on Giddings Avenue in West Annapolis, uh, 703 Giddings Avenue, and I'm here with Derek, who all goes by the name of Buck, right? Yes, indeed. Derek Buck Williams, who is the owner of Groom My Style, which is sort of a newish men's salon in West Annapolis. Am I correct in that? You are correct. Actually, it's new to the area. Uh, you don't find too many men's salons. Well, that, that was one of the questions I had. Is it, You know, you've got ladies' salons and men's barbers. Uh, and then you've got that third, you know, haircuttery kind of junk. Right, exactly. <laughs> it's exactly. in there. Um, but you've been around for what, about about two years now? We've actually been in West Annapolis going on five years. Wow, that yes. long? Yes, five years. I need to get over here more. Yeah, we've been over here five years. <laughs> well, I mean, what is a men's salon versus a barbershop? So a men's salon is a hybrid. It's a salon like a women's salon and then a barbershop like where men go get their hair cut. And we hybrid them together and then we bring the spa uh, life into it where you can get a massage, a facial, and manicure, pedicure for men. A lot of men don't like going into salons because they feel uncomfortable because it's like, okay, you know, it's a little different, even though we're making it work. You know, it's, it's interesting. There's a lot of um, businesses that are that are like that. I mean, I know that uh, in the athletic industry, or I guess in the gym industry, they've had the, and I'm trying to remember the name of it, but there was a Jim specifically said it was sort of like the Planet Fitness model, real cheap monthly type rates that was uh, because women always felt awkward walking into a, a typical gym with the, the muscle heads yes. that, are, that are doing it. And it's it's interesting that you, you've developed that, that said, hey, you know, guys just feel weird walking into bubbles. Right. Exactly. Know, or exactly. whatever it might exactly. be. And nothing's wrong with bubbles. Not right. at all. But you need it somewhere to go. Once the grandfather's barbershops start going out of business, you don't see too many of the barbershops. There's one or two that are still in Annapolis that have been around a long time, but right. they used to be on every corner. You yeah. Know, you could get a bar- you could get a haircut. They they really do. Now, do you strictly men? We are probably ninety percent men. Okay. Uh we do have So you let the ladies come in and feel awkward. Yes indeed. Yes indeed. <laughs> yes indeed. We do have women that like to get a haircut, a precision precision cut with shears. We also, of course, the facials and the massages. So we do open it up for women. I've never had a massage. You haven't? Never in my life. You're missing out. You know, that, that's, what, that's what my girlfriend keeps telling me. You're missing out. And I, I just have never, never done it. It just seems very, very awkward to me for some reason. That's why there's a men's salon. And that's why we carry it because it's awkward to you. It's not something you would probably do. Uh, we do get a lot of first timers that go in and they come out and they're like, Oh, my God. I get it. I had no idea. <laughs> I had no idea. Do you get uh, manicure pedicures? Nope. That's the same thing. That's my teeth. We work, we, <laughs> we work, we work with our hands and we, we walk on our feet. And we don't realize once somebody goes in and they start massaging and going in and getting some of the cuticles cut, you go, wow, that's therapy. It's all therapy. I've heard, I've heard, I've heard that as well. I've nice heard therapy. that as well. Are you a, I, guess, I don't know, an aesthetician is probably, you're a, you say you're a hybrid. I mean, you are a stylist. Yes. Um, you know, stylist barber slash yes. barber. Yes. Uh, are, are you into, are you personally doing masseusing and facialing? And- no. So, the well, we don't call her masseuse. We call her a massage therapist. Because, okay. <laughs> you know, that's the old, you know, like, hey, what are they doing in there? Right, right, right. Uh, no. So, the massage therapist, um, she's actually, her name is Joy. She does, um, actually, she's a nurse also. So, she knows the body. And she does a lot of the football team, the professional players around here, uh, the Ravens and the uh, Commanders, and basketball. And how tough is it for you to say Commanders now? Is it starting to is it starting to gel with I you? I thought about it before I said it. <laughs> <laughs> There's three names, right? Redskins, Washington <laughs> football, football team, team, and Commanders, right? <laughs> yeah. So I did think about it, but Joy is great. She is um, she's well known nationally. 
she's on um, this massage team that's known all over the um, country. But she's great. And so, yeah, massages are great for uh, first-timers. They really are. You've dropped a couple names and tidbits here. I mean, you got you said you know professional ball players, and before we started recording, you talked about uh, being open during COVID and having a lot of you know high level government officials and stuff like that that come here. And I mean, I've looked at your website. Yeah, you've got Aaron Neville. You've you've got Malcolm Jamal Warner, Alfonso Ribeiro, who actually was here a couple of years ago at the Bay Sox. Oh, when okay. He was, uh, did an appearance there. Uh, my favorite is Cheech. Oh yeah, <laughs> um, Cheech Cheech Marion. But um, I mean, where did this client and and the roster come. I'm, I'm assuming that Cheech and Alfonso and Malcolm and Aaron are, are not traveling to West Annapolis to uh, get their haircuts. And if they are, I need to probably know about that. But yeah, correct. That's actually I was in L.A. Um, so I did television some years back. So I, you know, added to that list as I started out. I actually was doing celebrities before I went to L.A. I used to do some groups like um, Black Street. The song was No Diggity, No Doubt. That's a very popular song. Uh-huh. Um, a lot of comedians from David Allen Greer to Wayne Brady, um, musical artists such as Ruben Stutter from American Idol. So I've done quite a few different things with um, celebrities um, and shows. So yeah, it's I have a it's a long list. People I don't know. It's something are, you, are, are you an LA native? No, I'm from Norfolk, Virginia. Okay, yeah, from Norfolk, military town. So how did how did how did your how did your career progress to from Norfolk to L.A. to West Annapolis. So the funny thing is I had a salon in Virginia Beach, Virginia. It was called Future Styles by Buck. Okay. And um, it was a 14-chair salon and about 20 employees back in the 90s. And um, I did some celebrities back then, like I was saying, with Black Street. That was one of the first groups I worked. His name was Teddy Riley. And um, cutting him, it grew to another celebrity list. And I actually competed in a hair show in Atlanta. It's called uh, the Bronner Brothers Hair Show. It's one of the largest African-American hair shows in the country. And I won it back in 1995, the, the men's competition for barbering. And that grew to the second largest show in Chicago in 1997. I won that hair show, uh, Precision Hair, because that was called the Proud Lady Hair Show. And that was in Chicago. Um, and from growing from that... I went on to um, opening up um, that Future Styles by Buck. And then I met my wife that's from Annapolis. Her name is Nan. Everybody knows Nan. She works over at Main and Market. She's one of the salespeople. Uh, So she's definitely known in the sales at uh, Main and Market. She's excellent. Also another company that's hard to not call Main Ingredient. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Right, exactly. I had to think about that too, you know. But she's been there for a while, and we met um, when I owned um, Future Styles by Buck, and we got married a couple of years later. And then we found ourselves moving to Annapolis, and we stayed here for a few years, and then we moved to L.A., and I worked in L.A. with uh, quite a few people and television shows and commercials and magazine stuff. And then we found our way back to Annapolis when the recession hit Um in the uh, 2000s or mid-2000s. Yeah, 2008, something yeah. around there. Wow. So, and so the productions and television got hit really, really hard. And so reality TV took off and production companies couldn't pay. So reality TV took off and folks, you know, didn't have, you know, the money to pay for hair and makeup and, you know, not the money we really needed. And so it's tough to live in L.A. if you're not making any money. So we found our way back to Annapolis. Not a bad place to be. Yeah. So actually, when I came back to Annapolis, I worked for Robert Andrews Salon in Spa. That's uh-huh. Okay. Doing. Okay. So there. So that's. that's I mean, there, there's the other one that yeah. that has somewhat of a men's clientele as well. Yeah. Actually, when I came back, he's up in, up in Crofton, right? Or well, they call it Gambrels. Right. They right. call it Gambrels. It's right, right there. Right. 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 So so it could be a little bit of snootier. <laughs> yeah. A little, hey, it's like <laughs> Crofton Gambrels. Yeah. So I went there. He um, was looking for someone to get the men's salon going. Uh, it was called a men's zone. So I went there to have any clients and came in and built over the few, I think it was with him for about six years and um, built that clientele up till I was loaded. And then it was time for me to move on to my next space, which was a um, suite over at Solar Salons. Okay. And so I built that. Is that in Edgewater? That was in Crofton. That was. Oh, okay. Crofton. Okay. And, and that is that a, is that one like where you rent your own little 
area? Is that one of those? Yes. Yeah, it's sort of like a business. It's a business, but it's for the health and beauty um, industry. It's a great idea also. Well, it was about, I think it was 30 stalls in there. Now. Right. Well, I know that, um, uh, oh gosh, I'm drawing, drawing a blank on the name, but over there by um, Best Buy, Symmetry. 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 Yeah. I apologize. It was one of those. Because they but, go, wait a minute, you don't know well, my name. <laughs> well, well, that was, um, you know, that was a, a large salon. That was Glow at one point. Right. And they, you know, sold out and merged and there was some kind of a deal where they had a larger salon in there. But I mean, that has, I know that has the chirotherapy yes. with the freezing thing. They've got, you know, makeup, they've got hair cutting, both, you know, male and female. And it's, it's kind of a neat concept that concept. somebody owns the larger space and just sublets out the little... Little tiny booths. I got a funny story about that. Probably when I when I left Norfolk and Virginia Beach, I thought of doing that, having a big space, cutting it up and renting it out. But I didn't know how to explain it. I did not know how to explain it. So when I met the guys that own Solar Salons out in Colorado, I was one of the ambassadors for Solar a couple of years back. I told them that. I thought of this concept, but didn't know how to explain it. I do that all the time. I think, you know, God, you know, I thought of that. I just never did anything. Right. <laughs> we do. We all have these ideas. It's just taking it and applying it and let it, you know, walk itself out. So have you heard of that concept of these bubbles? All these bubbles go up in the air of these creative ideas until they pop, that one that pops, and then it just flourishes on everybody else. Yeah. Can you see that? Yeah. So that's all of us. We have these and we're speaking all these things out and they're these bubbles and they have the idea inside the bubble. And then once it, and then it just falls on all of us and it's like, you got the idea. I thought of that. And it went up in the air, but that one. That's right. It just popped. It just yeah. popped there. So, okay. So you moved back out here during, during a recession. And so that was your choice for Annapolis versus Hollywood because the business yeah, financial. was not there. <laughs> it, it had the potential to be here. Right. Okay, so you're you're pretty much full service. I mean, your hair cutting. You've mentioned precision hair styling or hair cutting. What is precision as opposed to any so, other type of hair cutting? So you can get a haircut at just a typical ten dollar, fifteen dollar haircut. That's somebody that comes out of school really doesn't pay attention to detail. They don't pay attention to your eyebrows. They don't pay attention to your ear. They don't pay attention to your nose hairs. They don't pay attention to shaping up the back of your neck but either tapering it out on the backside. So we're here in Annapolis, the Naval Academy. A lot of those guys would taper their neck out in the back, which means we fade it all the way out. Right. Or we tape it and crop it down on the sides real tight around the ears. Those are precision haircuts. The old haircuts was they just pulled it out, cut it. If it was off the ear, that's it. So more of the precision haircuts now, you look like you're about to go take a photo shoot. Okay. Okay? So right now... The hottest thing is for men with gray is to cut it shorter, taper it down, and... I see you looking at me. Because I got gray, too, <laughs> and I cut it down, you know? But that's that's a cleaner look. The old guys used to just cut it, and they look old. They didn't cut their hair to, to make it look more trendy. Fashion, fashion forward. Um, that's the other thing about Groom My Style. We're in the fashion also, and we make sure that we bring you up to date on what's happening, not just with your hair, but with, with um, grooming and fashion. That's interesting because, I mean, one of the things I had on my little list here is, uh, you know, I've got boring hair. Yeah, I see you agreeing here, too. You're going, well, yeah, okay. I can't, I can't <laughs> wait to answer that one, yes. Well, you know, and, uh, and, and, and I know that. I mean, I've had, I, you know, in parts of my life, I like change. In other parts of it, I don't. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I've had this gray hair for for a long, long time, and I mean, you know, it's just not much else to do. So it's like, okay, we'll part it on the side, take it, you know, if, if you, you know, short off the ears, and mm-hmm. let's call it a day. Right. Um, I'll see you in you know a month or six weeks, and okay. and go from there. I mean, as a stylist, though, I mean, you're able to, I mean, I guess take a look at like facial shapes and body sizes and ages, and you know, I mean, I mean, obviously, I'm not going to look like the, you know. Guy Fieri with the spike hair and a, and, and a, and a goatee. Right. Um, but I mean, you know, is, is there, is there hope for fat old guys like me with gray, with gray and hair? That's probably 40% of the guys that come here, you know, they are, they're mature guys. Um, they're looking to do something a little different. They've been doing it one way uh, for a long time and we just tweak what you might have. And then some guys want a drastic change. Now, 
Last week I had a guy, he had hair all the way down his back, and he had been growing it out for four years. It's just like, I don't know what to do with it, but I want to change. I want a total change. And we cut it all off, and we, we, we combed it and gave him a part, and he was like, oh, I like that. Um, it took 15 years off his life, you know? So a haircut, I see the, the, the glasses you have on with those frames. Right. You know, your haircut is not bad. It's just, I would taper it down on the sides a little bit more, take your front, make the front a little bit longer and taper your back down. Yeah. Interesting. Well, I mean, I, I tend to be more about the, um, the maintenance and the upkeep for myself. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't. I don't like to fuss with my hair. I mean, I said, you don't like to fuss with your hair yeah, too much. There's no <laughs> hair here. <laughs> Anybody knows me. There's no hair here. Yeah. How, do, how, how do you have confidence in a barber that has no hair? <laughs> I think I think once you look at the pictures before you come, you go, "Oh, wait a minute, he can cut my hair." <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no. I mean, you know, again, I I jokingly say, you know, when do I know it's time to get hair? When I wake up in the morning, and I just p- push it to the side, and it's still sticking out. So now that, that, that means it's grown too long and it needs to cut down. So we so it's help just you with that. We help you with that. We make sure we get you pre-booked. So if you got your hair cut this week, and then you're probably like you say, you're a four week guy. We're going to make sure you come back in four weeks because we got you on the schedule. Well, you got big guys that come to your house and say, "No, you get you get a text and you get an email saying, hey, we will be looking for you at one o'clock on this Thursday.'" <laughs> cool. So yeah. All right. Well. I'm I'm putting that down here on my list that I need to I need to check this out to see if you can change something out. I mean I don't I'm 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 game. Well, that's what it's all about. We can definitely. So, sure. what um, best way to do business with you? Obviously, uh, your website is groommystyle.com. Yeah, groommystyle.com. Um, we can see all of the uh, everything that's going on here. You, can you make appointments online? You can make appointments online. Also, um, I want to make sure I, I, I let folks know when you go to the website, you'll see my face, correct? But majority of the clients. Um, that come here, it's probably 80% of white guys that come to, that we cut. It's me and Mary. Mary also, she cuts hair here also. She's been here for a couple of years. But a lot of people, when they see it, they go, is that a black barbershop? And it's it's not a black barbershop. Um, it's, a, it's a men's salon that cuts all types of hair. But because we're here in this area, West Annapolis, which actually I'm the first African-American business, business with a storefront in West Annapolis. We made history. Um, That's so awesome. Back. Yeah. Congratulations. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah, a lot of people don't know that. We don't, they don't even know I'm here. But once they find it, they come and go, oh, wow, this is what we're looking for. Annapolis is full of little hidden secrets that, you know, you, you know, both for places to eat and yeah. things to do and yeah. see and, and yeah. everything like that. And this certainly appears to be one of them. As far as African-American haircut, I've had some people on our Facebook page ask me sometime, and I don't know the the technical term of it, but with a where you would carve or oh, part put a part in a design. Oh yeah, we don't do that. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, because no. we're not. We're, that's not. That's not. We're not a barbershop, and we we're not into, and that's not our clientele. Our clientele is probably we do have young kids, but majority of them anywhere from twenty one to seventy, and they're more mature guys that come in. Uh, like I say, business owners, White House. Pentagon, NSA, right? IT guys. We got a lot of IT guys that don't get haircuts, but they come here and it's like, you know what? I don't have a problem getting a haircut now. Right, <laughs> they right. don't put a hat on and just work from home. Right, right, right. Yeah. Working in the basement in yeah, the dark yeah. and, and, yeah. and everything else. Yeah. What, what's your most popular service that you do here? I mean, obviously I'm going to say haircutting, uh, but beyond and styling, but beyond that, what, I mean, you've got massage, you've got uh, facials, you've got pedicures, you've got manicures. And we do hot leather shaves. Okay. With the hot leather shaves, that's that's definitely popular too. Um, the massages, of course, but of course the haircut is number one, um, and that's how we get you in the door because you can see that from looking at all the social medias and you say, oh, okay, or even reading the reviews. We have great reviews also. Mm-hmm. Do you personally like cutting men's hair, women's hair, or do you have a preference for you know black, white, men's hair? Uh, men's hair. I love cutting men's hair. The other part of the question is hair is hair. And when you're in hair school, if you understand that uh, straight hair is the same thing as curly hair, the only thing with curly hair is when you comb it out, you comb it out to be straight and you cut it at the end. So that's the, because everybody looks at it like, well, his hair looks tight. It doesn't look like he needs a haircut, an African-American male. But what it is is that when we're combing it and you're combing it and you're combing it and you take the clippers or the shears against it, you're doing the same thing with your hair, which is straight. You're cutting the end of the hair. Okay. So when you see that and you understand, it's like, it's sense. simple. So that's how I also teach. I also teach 
students that are coming out of school or there's a veteran that want to learn how to do men's hair or African-American men's hair because they're afraid, intimidated, I'll show them and teach them. Actually, Mary, I taught her how to cut uh, African-American male's hair, um, fades and shaping them up and all that kind of stuff. So hair is hair once you understand and don't get worried and scared. I'm going to mess this up. We all mess up. We all make mistakes. But if you know how to correct that mistake, you can move on in life. And so I love helping people that are not, you know, um, well equipped to cut men's hair. And I'm actually looking for some hairstylists that want to do more men's hair. We are definitely, we have some openings and we're looking for somebody to come be a part of it. Interesting. Well, what, what type of training do you need or do you have? I mean, I know Maryland has a ridiculous thing where you have to be licensed to be to be a barber, which I think is just a money grab with, with most things in Maryland. So, so now I'm a licensed cosmetologist. And so that means that I can cut men's hair, women's hair, I can color and all that. So we do color hair also. Okay. Um, so those licenses are the same, basically. Um, we can do some of the chemical rea- um, services. But yes, we are really looking for the cosmetologist because we do more straight hair and we do more sheer work. So when people look at the website and they see me, they get it kind of confused. And I'm saying, don't get it confused. Because the area that we're in, we're doing more white men with straight hair. And I can actually show you how to do it so you won't be so nervous about it. A lot of times women get like that are doing, you know, hair in salons are like, I don't know if I can do that. Let me show you. And I take them and train them and show them how to do it. So you're a licensed cosmetologist. Mm -hmm. And um, do you have to take a test in Maryland and stuff like that? Or or do you just sort of transfer a license over from... So I went to school in Virginia, Virginia Beach, Virginia. Oh, okay. And so I was, um, I got my license in the state of Virginia first. And then when I moved to, to Maryland, then I got my license over in Maryland. How long have you been cutting hair? In, in- oh, my God. Um, See, now we're going to ask you to figure out how old so, you are. So, okay. So let me go back. My father was a barber and <laughs> he had. Is he going to be a stylist? What the? <laughs> so what the but he, he didn't take it full. He didn't take it full time. He was a, he was a mail carrier. Uh, and he did barbering on the sides. He was in the military. He did barbering in the military. And so this was in my blood. I didn't even didn't even know this was going to happen. So he built a maid chef <laughs> barbershop behind the house in Chesapeake, Virginia, uh, when I was a kid. And so all my friends would come over and say, hey, just clean my neck up. So I would clean him up. I would go out there. And he, one day he said, are you messing with my clippers? I'm like, no, I'm not messing with him. Not me but he knew it. He knew it. And so eventually he saw some of the kids I was cutting. He's like, okay, come on in here. So he put another chair in there, and I was in there with him. And he said, come on in. Next day I know I was cutting his clients. How old were you? I think I started at 13. Wow. Yeah, I think I started at 13. So it was always a gift. I didn't know it was a gift. But I had the, the, the um, I could see, I guess I can have the vision of style. Because I always liked style books. GQ. I by, in- by, the, by the way, right there, you just said the vision of style? Yes. Your next salon, that's your name for it. What's that? Vision of Style. Ooh. I like that name. Hey, okay. I like that. Okay, okay. <laughs> that's one of those ideas that's going to burst. It's, on, the it's on the tape. Yeah, it's on the tape. Yeah. It's going to be the next big change yes. going around the country. Yes. Vision of Style. Yes. Damn it all. I was sitting there talking with Buck on yeah. that. Yeah, so yeah, that was, um, and so that's how I got into cutting hair. My father was a barber, and um, it took me a long time to realize that I had to give. A long time. So, yeah, to answer that question, I've been cutting a long time. And then um, one of the neighborhood guys that I was cutting, um, I might have been in my late 20s, he ran up on, this is a this is a great story, the guys that started Black Street. The, the group was Guy, but his name was Teddy Riley, and they were putting a studio in Virginia Beach, Virginia. And um, this guy went past to look for some studio time. And the person at the front door said, hey, do you know a barber? Um, he said, yeah, you're from the area, right? I said, yeah. He said, can you call him? He said, what better? I'll go past his house. So I wasn't even working at the time. I was trying to figure life out. <laughs> right, right. He knocked on the door and said, hey, man, I just talked to some guys. Do you know the group? Da, da, da. I'm like, nah, I really don't know who that group is. He said, well, they want you to cut their hair. So I went, cut their hair. Next thing I know, that was my first celebrity. And um, boom, 
I grew from there. And then the next thing you know, I had to go to school to get my license because I didn't want to just keep cutting hair without a license. Now, now you got to make it legit. So I made it legit and got my license. Uh, I think I was 30 years old when I got them. And, you know. Who's your favorite celebrity that you cut? Wayne Brady. Wayne Brady? Wayne Brady. He's a good tipper? He's a great tipper. <laughs> You know, you know, you see Wayne Brady on TV, yeah, and that's who he is. And even off TV, he will come up and talk to you. He will share information with you. He's just a great guy, you know. And I'm not just saying that. That's who he is. That's Wayne's world. <laughs> that's, that's, you know, that's that's, that's awesome, awesome to hear. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I've I've met a, a couple different celebrities over my life and stuff like that. And it's, I, I always tend to be like, just leave them alone. Yeah. They're trying to eat. Yeah. They're but trying, that's a lot. You know. it's, everybody I really dealt with or worked with. They've been great people. They're great people. So I don't want to cancel out anybody else. But I worked with him the longest, so um, we spent a lot of time together. Well, you know, life's too short to work with jerks. Yeah. So you, you know, you know, pick and choose who you want to uh, yes. who you want to deal with. Do you prefer working for yourself and owning a business, or for working for someone else? I'm this is just sort of a, I guess, an entrepreneur type of a question. You know, the funny things. I've always been an entrepreneur in my mind. Always. Um, I was a daydreamer. And the funny thing, I used to dream about being in L.A. as a kid. And then when I experienced it, it was like, this is what I want to do. And I actually did that as a visionary, being an entrepreneur, because I was out there, didn't know anybody. So I had to make it work. Uh, So the first place I went to try to find a job in L.A. was a barbershop called the Barbershop Club. This guy named was Woody Lavelle. He owned a, a product called Woody's. It's a sh- it's a shampoo and conditioner. It's pretty big now. I think he sold it. Uh, but Woody's was uh, a product that he owned. And when you work actually in salons and barbershops, you really are an entrepreneur when you are um, an independent contractor. Oh, yeah. I mean, I and, and, and it's interesting, I mean, the difference between the genders is that I know women tend to be fiercely loyal to their stylist. Yes. Um, I'd imagine since most of my life I've gone to a barber and a good number of it has been to like the hair cuttery or the great clips or, you know, whoever they happen to hire that week. Right. Um, and there, and there's not a whole lot of loyalty. It's like, yes, yeah, 20 minute wait for the next person that's got a, you know, an open chair and a pair of clippers. Right. Uh, you find the loyalty is, is pretty strong here in your business. So yes, because it's a men's salon, um, we don't have a lot of people sitting around. So that one-on-one and we build a relationship, the loyalty is amazing. The only thing with me is I'm booking out where guys can't get back in. So I'm booking out anywhere from two to three weeks oh, Wow, okay. where you, you can't get in with me. So a lot of the guys have been with me for years. They have to move on, but they're still loyal. They're just saying, Derek, I have to get a haircut. I can't get back in. So they feel bad. I feel bad because I can't service them. But the loyalty and a men's salon is definitely different than going to a straight barbershop. Sure, right? sure. Well, they 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 know that you've you've done done well by them in the past. Exactly. And they're not going to hire some, <laughs> right? You know, exactly. I mean, do you accept walk-ins? We do accept walk-ins, but it's hard to get in. But um, don't but don't count on it. <laughs> well, if Mary's open, if I'm open, most times I'm not open unless someone cancels. But we do accept walk-ins, but we prefer you booking online. That's the best way. Well, it manages my time and your time exactly. a lot easier. Exactly. Absolutely. Would you ever go back to L.A. now that you've tasted the East Coast and the West Coast? I don't think so, but my wife wants to go back. <laughs> she was an actor out there also, so she she knows she still could do some work out there. But um, I'm settled. I'm an East Coast kid. I'm, I love the East Coast. Yeah, I, 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 there, there are two types of people in the world. There's East Coast and West Coast. I jokingly say that as soon as I fly over the Mississippi, I start to itch and have hives. And, and L.A. particularly, I can't stand it. Now, that. I did love L.A. Don't get me wrong. That's that's my second home. I really, you know, because there are a lot of people from the East Coast on the West Coast. Mm-hmm. And you start meeting them, and then it's like, okay, so we got the East, East Coast thing going on. But, yeah, it was really hard in the beginning. Oh, my God, it was tough. Well, it's, it's, it's a real cultural change. Yes. It's, <laughs> it's, oh, my God. My, my One of my first experiences in L.A. was I was going for a meeting, uh, a business that was just adjacent to LAX, and it was a, one of the high rises that was there. And I'm going up in the elevator, and um, fairly crowded elevator, and all of a sudden this woman behind me pushes like the next floor button. I thought, oh, she just didn't push her button and stuff like that. So the thing stops, the door is open, and she looks to the lady that's standing next to me and says, you need to get off of this elevator now because your perfume's giving me a headache. And I'm like... 
wow, there's a sense of entitlement. That's L.A. And then the uh, woman who had the perfume, she got off. I said, oh, there's somebody that should have stayed here and just slapped this woman. That went, that, <laughs> she went from the East Coast, right? Uh, yeah. Because yeah. it would have been an argument. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fight. Yeah, <laughs> <Right>? New York. <laughs> yeah. You're talking to me? Me? <laughs> exactly. Or <laughs> well, Boston, right? <laughs> or even here in the DMV. Oh, yeah. oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Um, we're, okay, as we wrap it up here, one thing I've got to ask, okay, you've got Derek Williams. Where does Buck come from? Oh, my God. So whoever listens to this, they will know where Buck comes from. So when I was, I don't know, eight, nine years old, um, I was a football player in the neighborhood, and I played in school too. But um, one of the older gentlemen in, ha- in the uh, neighborhood I was running football, and I was just running and running, and the guys were trying to bring me down, but I was just this little thing, and he's like, stop bucking, stop bucking, so I'm just bucking, and my head is going for me, stop bucking, <laughs> and so we're going to give you the name, your name is Buck now, and that's how I got it, by running the football. Interesting. Stay with me, stay with me for years, and there are a lot of people don't even know my real name is Derek, they just know me as Buck. Buck Williams. And even in L.A., it was on the credits, after television shows and movies, it would, the credits would come down as Buck Williams. Interesting. Yeah, they only know the real name. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Well, Groom My Style, 703 Giddings Avenue. Uh, it does have a suite. What, L3? or L3. Um, you don't really need that. 703 Giddings Avenue. It's right there. It's all street front. Uh, lots of free parking real close by. I am literally right out in front. Get online, groommystyle.com. Make an appointment. Check and see what it's out. Um, if you need a haircut in the next week, don't count on seeing Buck because he's booked out two weeks. And <laughs> but at least come see Mary. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Joy. You know, this is uh, this is interesting. I'm going to be, uh, as soon as I'm due again, I will definitely make an appointment and be over here. Um, you, you talked about coloring. Can you color this hair? We sure can. You, I always heard that you couldn't color gray or white hair. Where did you hear that at? I don't know. It was probably just some urban rumor that some, <laughs> some, somebody just feeding me some crap just to get rid of me or something yeah, like that. Yeah, Do you do the funny colors too? Is that, is that well, still big? I mean, I know women, you know, they, they've got the red what, and the purple. Wait a minute. What green. do you mean by funny colors? Well, the red and the purple yeah. and the green and stuff like that as opposed to, you know. Well, we're not that salon, but we can. Right. But that, we're not that salon. You have to come in and get the consult. We have to consult you on it to uh, do those colors. But we're really more, like I said, more mature. Um, the the uh, ash grays and, you know, taking some of the silver out. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. I look forward to it, man. I'm psyched. I'm going to come here and probably... I just had my hair cut probably about two weeks ago. Well, so I'm probably like gonna... it. And you know what? I think I'm going to treat you to a massage. I don't oh, think that's, that's, no, that's going to be a hard sell. He's shaking me, his head. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Buck, thank you so much for your thank time you, this God. morning. Congratulations on five years. And I apologize for not knowing that it's been five years. All the best, man. You guys, you've built a great little business here in West Annapolis. You're in a perfect area because West Annapolis is going to pop in the next 18 months with everything that's going on on Annapolis street with the restaurants and RAR brewing and uh, the way MRE has been building up all over here. Uh, It's, this is just going to be, this is going to be the, this is going to be the Georgetown of, of DC in very short time. So I'm looking forward to that and I'm looking forward to hearing more of your, uh, more of your successes. And uh, we'll talk uh, in probably about two weeks. Sounds good. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for listening to this week's Local Business Spotlight. Please make sure to visit ionanapolis.net for all your local news, events, and opinion. And in case you haven't already, please subscribe to the Ion Annapolis Daily News Brief, where we bring you all the day's local news direct to your phone, tablet, or computer in about 10 minutes. It comes to you at 6 a.m. every Monday through Friday, and you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.